right, so now we're ready to learn more about electrostatics. So just as a reminder from previous years, if we have two like charges, so a positive charge paired with a positive charge, or a negative charge paired with a negative charge, then they will tend to repel and move away from each other. On the other hand, if we have opposite charges, so a positive paired with a negative charge, then they will tend to attract and move towards each other. Now, this force that is creating this movement is known as the electric force. And from this diagram, we know the direction of the electrical force based on the interaction that's occurring. And the magnitude is given by Coulomb's law, which can be expressed as Fe equals K Q1 Q2 divided by R squared. Now, similar to the gravitational law, Q1 is one of the charges, one of the charges' magnitudes. We don't care about the sign. It is given in coulombs, which we'll get to in a second. Q2 is the other charge's magnitude. And R is the distance of separation between their centers. So looking at our diagram, Q1 is one of the charges, Q2 is the other charge, and then R is the distance between their centers. Now the Coulomb, which is the unit of charge, is equal to 6.24 times 10 to the 24, the charge of an electron, which is the smallest possible charge. So the charge of an electron, QE, is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So all charges that ever exist have to be a integer multiple of this value. So knowing this, our k constant in our equation, which is known as Coulomb's constant, is 9 times 10 to the 9 newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. Now from our equation, since we're only putting in magnitudes, Fe is going to be a magnitude of the electrical force. To get the direction, if it is an opposite situation where you have a positive and negative charge, then they will attract. And if it is a like charge situation, then the charges will repel. And the force is radial, so they will repel from the center of each charge, or they will attract towards each other's centers. And another way to think about this is if you do want to put in the signs of the charges, if it's opposite charges, then you will get a negative force. If they are like charges, you will get a positive force because a positive times a positive is obviously going to give you a positive, and a negative times a negative will give you a positive. All right, so now we can do an example. So we have two particles of charges 1 microcoulomb and negative 3 microcoulombs that are situated on the x-axis at a separation of 10 centimeters. We want to place a third particle of unknown charge at coordinates x, y such that it experiences no net force. So if we draw a diagram, with our axes, then I'll place Q1 at the origin. So this is Q1, which is one microcoulomb, and Q2 a little bit to the right, and this is negative three microcoulombs. Their separation is going to be L equals 10 centimeters. So then I have Q3 where I want to place it somewhere in this arrangement such that it experiences no net force. So let's pretend I place it somewhere in the middle, either on the x-axis or above or below. Below and above are essentially mirrored versions of each other, so it doesn't really matter. So let's consider the case where Q3 is positive. Then it's going to be repelled from Q1 and attracted to Q2. No forces are canceling here, so it's not the arrangement we're looking for. So let's pretend it is negative. Well, then it's going to be repelled from Q2 and attracted to Q1 
And once again, no forces are canceling, so this is not the situation we're looking for. So Q3 cannot be in the middle of Q1 and Q2. So it's either going to be to the right of Q2 or to the left of Q1, somewhere in this region. But since Q2 is larger in magnitude than Q1, then we're going to be we're going to have to be closer to Q1 so that the distance r is lower. And by our equation, Fe is equal to k Q1 Q2 over r squared. We need to be closer to Q1 so that we can balance out the forces because the force from 1 has to be equal to the force from 2. And the only way we can do that is if we're closer to Q1. So this situation on the right is not what we're looking for. So now, we can either be on the x-axis, below or above. Let's consider being below the x-axis and being a negative charge. If we're negative, we're going to be attracted towards Q1 and repelled from Q2. Now, the only way these forces can cancel is if these two angles are equal. But you can clearly see that if we're, one angle is from a much larger distance and one is from a much closer distance, then they will never be equal. And so we can only be on the x-axis. So we have our position in mind. We just do not know the distance. So let's call this distance x between Q3 and Q1. Then we also have Q3 being separated from Q2 with a distance of L plus x. Now if we consider the free body diagram of Q3, let's assume it's positive for the purpose of calculation. Assume Q3 is positive. Then it's going to be repelled from Q1 and it's going to be attracted towards Q2. We'll make our reference system where right is positive. And now we can create our equations. So we have the net force for Q3 is equal to Fe2 plus Fe1. And if we just consider the x direction, then we have Fe2 minus Fe1. And we can sub in our equation for the electric force. So K times Q2, Q3. Q2 and Q3 are separated by L plus X squared minus K, Q1, Q3, which are only separated by X squared. And this all has to equal 0. So then we can divide by Q3, and that cancels out of the equation. We can divide by K, and we can get rid of that. And right away we see that Q3, positive or negative, does not matter. Now let's see why it doesn't matter. If Q3 is positive, then it's going to repel from Q1, and it's going to be attracted towards Q2. If it's negative, it's going to be repelled from Q2 and attracted towards Q1. And so in both cases, we can have the potential for forces to cancel out. So then we can go on with our equation. So we have Q2, we can move that to one side. Q2 L plus X squared is going to equal, so since Q2 is positive, we'll move Q1 to the other side. So Q1 over X squared. We'll do some cross multiplication. So we have Q2 over Q1 equals L plus X squared over x squared. Then we'll square root both sides and we'll get positive and negative roots. And then we'll split this fraction. So we have q2 over q1 equals l over x plus x over x, which is just 1. So then x is going to equal l divided by plus or minus q2 over q1 minus 1. 
So then if we actually sub our numbers in and consider both roots, we'll find that x equals 10 centimeters, so 10 times 10 to the negative 2 meters, divided by the square root. We are only considering the magnitude of the charges because we accounted for the signs when we considered the force direction. So we have Q2 is 3 microcoulombs over 1 microcoulomb for Q1. The microcoulombs cancel out, so we only get 3 over here. Positive or negative, minus 1. So now if you consider the positive root, so positive root 3, we'll get an answer of 0 0.1366 meters. And if we consider the negative root, we get x2 equals negative 0 0.0366 meters. Now positive, since we denoted x as being to the left of the origin, the positive is also towards the left. And so the negative is towards the right. But we said earlier that nothing, or our q3 cannot be placed in the middle region because the forces will never cancel out. So this value is inadmissible. And so our final answer is given by x1. Therefore, our xy position in meters is going to equal, since it's to the left of the origin, the actual coordinate is going to be negative. So 0 0.1366. And then 0 for y, because it's on the x-axis, meters. And that is your final answer.